Welcome to the Big Fat Gay Podcast, where we like to talk about the things that are weighing on our minds. I am Don Marshall. I am a big chubby guy living in sunny Hollywood. And today I am your Norman Rockwell of podcast hosts. <laughs> Gorgeous, <laughs> vibrant, and very pro-America. Goodness Good luck, gracious. Dan. Well, well, thank you, Don. <laughs> Let me stall while I think of something equally interesting for me. Hi, I'm Dan Oliverio. I'm an author, public speaker, and chubby chaser. And uh, today, today I feel very George O'Keefe. Ooh. Oh, Ooh. oh my. Just sort of. You're a floor. <laughs> vagina just in sort of way? just in sort of way? oh i'm not because i'm all warm and running inside right now i think that's because i've had oh, a lot of coffee uh, and <laughs> thank you everybody have a great week <laughs> all right take two take two take two <laughs> Oh, okay. It's, I guess it's my turn now. I, <laughs> that is usually how it goes. <laughs> I'm Trevor Keyson. I'm a super chub, and today I am. Um, I may be Andy Warhol. Uh, mm. I got Andy Warhol vibes because I had some coffee. I got yeah. some candy next to me, so it's all about um, branding. I got a hat. Mm -hmm. Maybe I'm gonna <laughs> do some uh, art and like I'm gonna put my candy, my candy jar, on a stool. <laughs> And that's art. <laughs> that that is exactly what art is. We'll learn more about it later <laughs> in the show. <laughs> My name is Michael. I am a chaser, and today I'm definitely channeling some Jackson Pollock vibes. And I'm not telling you why. <laughs> ah, I have some theories. <laughs> I, <laughs> I'm, I'm gonna, gonna move them, us but... past this before it's too late. <laughs> you started it. <laughs> today we are joined by a very special guest. Yes. Yay. Who are yes. you? <laughs> well, uh, who are you and why are you here oh um I, i'm ben bat slightly I, I i am myself i guess and um that's right and i would consider myself not a bear but more of a buster the jones type <laughs> oh, lovely, lovely. Let, let me just let me just introduce you to uh our, our yeah. many fans and listeners so uh bats is a multi-talented artist and designer uh living with his husband nick in new york city uh, he is a graduate of the Rhode Island School of Design. And is a, yay. Uh, and is a <laughs> painter, illustrator, sculptor, toy designer, and author. His work has been shown in galleries and museums across the world from New York to Los Angeles and even to Hangzhou, China. Uh, he's designed toys for Disney, uh, the Peanuts, Warner Brothers, and his first illustrated children's book is Groggle's Monster Valentine, which came out in uh, 2017. His most recent work is a modern reimagining of Lewis Carroll's Alice in Wonderland titled Alice's Adventures in Hashtag Wonderland. And recently, because it's something we're going to talk about on the show, uh, Bats has done a series of works exploring and celebrating the larger male form uh, centered on his exceedingly handsome original character, Gus, uh, that uh, you can see online and in pictures. And uh, we'll be talking about that. So yeah, and welcome, we've shared him a lot too. Yeah. yeah. And welcome. I have to say, I have my little kind of shrine to bats over on my bookshelf. I have my copy of Groggle. I have my <laughs> copy of Alice's Adventures in Hashtag Wonderland. I have my piece, uh, my original Bats Langley piece on the wall. Um, the we've monster. also had, <laughs> yes. Um, and we've also had bats do our uh, Christmas card the past two years, which That's right. has been wonderful. It's oh. just very lovely. I we, thought I recognized that art style. Yeah, we always get mm -hmm. so many great comments on our Christmas yes. cards. So thank you. Well, it's also it was always enjoyable to um, work with Dan and Trip around them because um, it, they're just you know this year was what was it um, Baskin um, which what was it uh, Rankin Rankin Bass. Bass. and uh, it was just like uh, I really enjoyed doing that style for a period of time. So it was a lot of fun. <laughs> <laughs> and also too, I realized and I was like, I do a lot more rank and bath stuff than I normally thought that I did, but I really love them. But um, mm -hmm. it was a really fun project. But. Well, and it's I, having worked with like I don't know all sorts of different artists. Uh, I have to say, Bats is the most enjoyable. Um, I worked with a a russian artist once like this <laughs> oh my god like, 20 year old russian <laughs> russian woman living like like russia russia like and russia. the the hostility <laughs> in the emails <laughs> back oh. and forth it was uh it was a little rough <laughs> well the and the i just i remember this story mm -hmm. and her idea it, she was because she she was supposed to be drawing a fat character. Yes. And her idea of a fat character was like maybe my size. And also oh, like, maybe okay. even fitter, maybe even fitter. <laughs> like he looked really shredded and <laughs> he was wearing a hoodie and that's what made him fat. Yeah. yeah. And then like it eventually she redrew it, but like he was like, she didn't know how to like draw, I guess fat, a fat body. So it was kind of like his head was down and is like, he was kind of like rolled up into a ball. Oh, okay. 
So they they do fat proportions. Well, Apparently, they don't yeah. have fat people in Russia. Well, you know what I find <laughs> interesting is, well, maybe that they just don't have YouTuber videos in Russia. Because what I find interesting is that more people these days are drawing fat almost like if it had motion in like mm-hmm. a way that like I've never seen. Like, if you look at a lot of like Instagram artists and whatnot, they, they show like more of like, you know, fat more as not as like a mass or a volume, but it, it just as. A feel kind of, and I wonder maybe she just didn't have YouTube. Hmm. <laughs> you know how fat moves. Maybe that's mm-hmm. you know. Well, I think it's often what you get in a lot of design like that, where a fat body is just a failed body, and so she's like, "Well, how do I fuck up? You know, I, I can draw a body, but how do I fuck it up? So it's fat." You know? Exactly. <laughs> I was actually um watching a live stream of an artist uh, yesterday, and they were they specialize in kind of fat bodies. Or at least they are very skilled. I mean, they specialize in everything, but they are talented at drawing fat bodies. And they were talking about just the their frustration with people being like, "Well, like how, like how do you draw a fat person? Like it's how do you well, do that?" <laughs> well, that's what I wanted to ask Bats. Actually, I wanted to, I wanted to know. You're obviously you you know you go to a, a art school and they teach you how to draw the body and they do figure drawing with you. How different is it drawing a fat body? Well, what I will say is it's really funny going to art schools and looking at the art that's, you know, displayed, like drawing and stuff displayed in art schools in New York. The models are much fitter <laughs> because they're probably like <laughs> Broadway dancers or whatever. And they're fitter and they're more muscular. And I went to Providence. I went to Rhode Island School of Design in Providence. And they're a lot older and uh, not as well for not not as, you know, uh, muscularly <laughs> developed. And so I, I drew a lot of fat bodies in, in art school. A lot of our models were of uh, very d- different sizes. So I have to say, maybe if you're wanting to go to an art school, um, you know, not in New York City to draw more uh, diversity, I guess you would go to a different <laughs> school <laughs> outside of the city. But it was interesting because like what the, one of my models I had was, um, I think her name was Jennifer. And... Jennifer was a, a large, large woman, and I loved her because whenever she would model, she was always just, you know, she would try some extreme poses that they didn't work. She was like, I'm just going to do something that's, you know, just relaxing and whatnot. But she always posed herself like, in, in a way where I would say is in like a non-classical uh pose so she would do these great Mm. poses and she was really fantastic so i I was lucky enough to have some models that had a little bit of uh size and girth to them so um in art school which was great but i feel like the professors actually enjoyed that more and uh, you know we're looking for bodies that had more shape you know shapeliness and were you know different than the the normal form yeah was that where your interest in drawing fat people and fat bodies started or did was did you have that beforehand and you just sort of learned how to craft it while you were in school i think it was just you know the way that art school sort of sees you know uh life drawing and whatnot it's sort of seen as um the body is just this machine and this thing that we just draw from it there's nothing you know there was just in some ways there's you have to put the sort of sensuality into it if you wanted to or you could draw you know the, the body as just like this form you know and I feel I feel like the more that I've been exploring with uh, some of my more gust pieces it's more playing around with the idea of you know what is fat what is not you know what, what does that mean you know for me Gus is sort of like a meditation on fat and being a fat man and uh, and so that's how I sort of see Gus uh I, I was always a big fan of Botero. I don't know if anyone who's knows the oh, Colombian sure. artist Botero, mm-hmm. yeah, um, <laughs> which is very uh, he he believes in like the idea that um, you know he doesn't believe in drawing that he you know he makes fat people he doesn't draw or paint fat people he um, paints volume, and I yeah. think that's like fascinating mm-hmm. because I mean um, if you look at it it's like these bodies taking up you know a space within a painting. And we're in, in a space that there's sculpture. So it, it's sort of, I don't know, when I'm working on projects, especially with Gus or other um, full-figured, you know, um, characters, I'm always thinking that in my head. Mm. That's interesting. Nice. Do you think, 
that being a, a fat gay man brings something to your work in particular, or is it just, you know, that's just happens to be who you are and you, you just happen to draw what you draw is, do you, do you think there's a conversation going on between that identity and your work? Uh, yeah. I mean, I'm, I'm fat and I'm a gay guy. <laughs> so, <laughs> I mean, Tell me more. So, yeah, so, uh, so I guess, yeah, no, I mean, it, it's funny because I don't see, um, it, it, it's funny when I've been wor working on these guest pieces, I've been thinking about like the idea of masculinity and femininity, you know, um, the, the fact that I, I don't sort of see Gus as gay or straight. Um, and, you know, I sort of see him as just himself kind of. And, mm. um, and, you know, there's like touches where, you know, I have, you know, Gus with his pinky out or, you know, there's some like, you know, very feminine traits that I add to him here and there that may give you the idea that he's gay and some ideas where, you may not think that way. Um, it's sort of like been a, I, I guess, a journey to see like how people put themselves on Gus, and mm. um, which has been kind of fun. <laughs> <laughs> what is the what is the strangest take that people have had as far as a reaction to Gus? Like, I mean, because you get, I'm sure you get a lot of like comments and and things on like Instagram. What is the is there a moment that stuck out to you as far as somebody sort of putting their own um, bringing their own baggage to, to some of your art. It, it, well, what's fascinating was when I did the first piece, which was a, a sculpture and I was, I hadn't done sculpture in years or just because I, I live in a New York apartment and you just really need space to do anything with sculpture because <laughs> so disastrously, you know, dirty and, um, and it takes up space and, you know, so, and where um, do you put the kiln? Yeah. yeah. And, well, <laughs> it's, it's my oven. Um, <laughs> and, which is also, you know, um, maybe not a good idea either, but you know, the, um, but the thing is, you know, I, I hadn't done it in a long time and it was really funny. I was going through some old notes, um, my freshman year and in my notes, I found this, uh, some lectures based on, um, you know, the woman of Willendorf and all that. And which is funny is that I was born on the day that the wo woman of Willendorf was discovered. Oh, wow. <laughs> which, <laughs> which is like, well, I guess mm -hmm. this is telling of some, in some way. And so, <laughs> um, and so I was thinking about like the idea of, um, you know, originally I'm doing Gus is like this idea of making a totem with a totem holding a totem. So like, you know, he's this sculpture holding an ice cream cone that's sort of in the form of Gus. Um, mm. and the, just this idea of, you know, totems in general. And, the, and I remember this professor and she, um, brought in, um, this Barbie doll, this naked Barbie doll. And she, you know, presented it to the class and she said, you know, you know, thousands of years ago, you know, from now, someone is going to discover this Barbie and say, this is what people thought that women should look like. <laughs> <laughs> and, mm -hmm. and it was fascinating because it's like, well, you know, maybe we need to be making more things that are, you know, less of what this, you know, the standard is or the abstract standard is and, you know, looking into presenting things, um, you know, differently. So that was mm -hmm. sort of my go-to. And what was fa fascinating was people were not upset about Gus's size because Gus is a very big character. And most people I was expecting to be like, Oh, it's disgusting. You're promoting obesity and, and mm. all this stuff. And actually more people mm. I would have to see. I got zero comments about his weight. Zero. It was about Gus's <laughs> sunburn that most oh. people had an issue with. People were like, Oh my God, you're, you're promoting skin cancer. <laughs> oh my God. <laughs> what? <laughs> Did someone really say that? People said I promoted skin cancer, but I thought it was very funny. And it was just very, and then I did a, a few other pieces with, you know, him having, um, you know, more of a pinkier, you know, pinkier look. And, <laughs> and people literally, they, they were like, maybe you should make him less sunburned. Just make him less sunburned. It's too much. <laughs> and then it was really funny. And then, you know, those comments went away, but it was really funny you know, getting those comments. And what was funny was that the sculpture never, I thought it was just going to go to some like, you know, someone who, you know, a gay guy who loves being, you know, bearish or chubby guys. 
and would, you know, sit on, you know, his coffee table at home. <laughs> and instead, it went to this, like, it was sort of a bidding war between these two women who one lived in Greenwich, Connecticut, and one lived in Westport, and they were fighting <laughs> over, over Gus. And what was hilarious <laughs> about it was both these women did not know each other. And their husbands were contacting me on the side going, I don't know what this Gus thing, you know, means about my body, but, you know, my wife really likes this. But they both said this. And, they, and you know, he said, you know, they were like, my wife really likes this. I don't know why she likes it, but she, she loves it. And both of them said the same thing. Wow. And it was just <laughs> hilarious. So, you know, he's now sitting in the home, um, in the Westport home. One. <laughs> enjoying himself um he was in a room full of um he, uh, the the woman who did eventually get him um she has a room of uh like zaftig women and he was the only male in the room of zaftig women and so <laughs> and i hear so, that <laughs> <laughs> We have been in that situation. <laughs> <laughs> Hashtag relatable. Yeah, it happens, you know. Um, but yeah, and so that was the, one of the other funny things about it too is just seeing a lot of um, people that I wouldn't necessarily say, "Oh my gosh, I'm a, a fan of this character." So um, it's, 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 it's. I'm it's curious. Just, what were the husbands? Were the husbands trying to influence who you would sell it to, or why were the husbands contacting you? Oh, the husbands were trying to like you know bring down the prices. You know, like they would, they would come back to me and be like, "Oh, you know, can, you, can you bring them down a little bit?" Or, you know, that sort of thing. Because you know, when, when buying room. art from the artist, it's negotiate. You know, you have to negotiate. Um, and so, you know, so but it was funny because they were both going, you know, back and forth between each other, and then it became yeah. more of a who's going to get it first sort of situation. And uh, so then it wasn't about price anymore. <laughs> but I get it on Mondays, Wednesdays, and Fridays. And you can have it. <laughs> it's funny that you bring up so this like these two kind of you know, I don't know. I'm imagining waspy kind of Connecticut women wanting Gus, and it made me think of like all of those. There's like this, I don't know, uh, totemic like. The weird fat chef statues, which yes. oh yeah, yeah, um, yes, exactly. Like at Home Goods and stuff, and then mm. I, I don't know, as a fat person, like I kind of hate them. <laughs> and it's <laughs> like they're so every, it's this yeah, and it's just they're weird looking. And for a while, my mom was like buying me fat chef oh, stuff. No. <laughs> and I don't know, I don't know if it's like it reminded her of me or there was, I mean. When I was a little kid, we went to Washington, D.C., and there was a restaurant with this fat chef statue outside. Oh, and yeah. she's like, oh, that statue is so funny. She's like, I, and like, I took a picture of her with the statue and she took a picture of me with the statue because it's just <laughs> the two of us. And I don't know if it's like maybe like the, these home goods fat chef statues reminded her of that or me or I don't know. I don't. But it's interesting that there is this desire for, I don't know, fat totemic men to kind of housewives well I, I think don has said it before yeah. where that that fat is just this it, when it's not being judged negatively it's being deemed this sort of asexual comfort warming yeah. uh, uh it's the comfort food of bodies yeah exactly you know? As, you know as long as we don't picture sex because that would be disgusting you know <laughs> they always make that quite clear <laughs> Well, I mean, historically, fat in art usually means good luck or plenty. Yeah. Mm -hmm. You know, mm -hmm. it's only until recently where it's sort of taken on the like, I don't know, something unpleasant in the art world. Usually. You're promoting obesity. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. And it's very funny when you add a little bit of sliver to things like, you know, I'll like, like you know, throw a little bit of underbelly to something or make the, you know, the buttons stretch a little too much. People are like, Ooh, that's exciting. Ooh. <laughs> 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 you know, and, like, and like just those moments are very funny because it's, it's, it is funny. You bring up the, you know, the chefs because, you know, it, there is like a catch quality that I enjoy in those. But what I do find really funny is that, you know, it, it is this like, you, you know, there's that whole culture of like, yeah, you were saying, I think, Dan, uh, um, about, you know, it's uh, it's 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 a safe way of looking at that. And, mm -hmm. you know, the thing that I found fascinating was like, you know, those those portraits of the big, you know, the big ladies with the tiny heads that you see like, at, you know, like a TJ Maxx or Marshalls. And it's like, <laughs> oh, you know, and these women feel like, oh, my God, like I can 
embrace this like feeling of womanhood kind of thing. And, and it is sort of a way of, I mean, I guess, you know, finding, you know, ways of looking at women in a, in a you know, different way. I think, there, have you ever guys ever seen, there was a documentary that came out a while ago, but it, I found it a couple of years ago. It was a, a documentary by Dawn French about body, women's bodies, I think it was called. Um, mm. No, but I love Dawn French. Yeah. Oh, you should watch it. It's fab and fantastic. I think it's still on YouTube. But she was saying something fabulous, which was, she was like, I'm so tired of looking at um, fat and bodies in classical painting positions. <laughs> mm. And I was really like, and it, that has always stuck in my head that like, not to do a body in a classical way, you know? And so whenever mm. I approach any of that, I just say, is it, is it too classical? <laughs> <laughs> you know? But because, it's interesting. It, I, I get what she's saying. It's always seems to be yeah, that, that Greek pose, which invites comparison to the original Greek poses, as opposed to just sort of appreciating the body on its own. Yeah. Yeah. You know, it's weird. And it's always like with yeah. lots of symbolism and, you know, between what they're eating with the fruit or, you know, <laughs> if they have a maid with them because that shows that they're wealthy and fat. And then, you know, there's all these little things. And also too, like the fact, um, I remember some, I don't know if it was a professor or someone said to me that, you know, the only way, the only reason why Rubens uh, women look the way they do is because they had 20 year wars and all the women did all day was wait for their husbands and did need uh, did needle point. <laughs> oh God. And I thought that was like, Oh, oh that's God. awful. That's absolutely awful. And that when they Sitting came at back, home, <laughs> yeah, when they eating came back bon, from, bon. Yeah. So when they <laughs> came back from war, you know, their wives are a lot more, you know, voluptuous. Um, and I thought that was like just the wildest thing for someone to say. Um, oh, but so typical on the other hand, too. Oh, yeah, absolutely. <laughs> absolutely. We have taken a look before it, uh, sort of representations of fat, fat male bodies primarily uh, in the art world. And like my observation has been less sort of Greek model as so much more like a, a lot of putting fat men in sort of feminine poses, hmm. like what we think of like, so like the arm draped across certain parts of the body like uh, reclining uh, as opposed to more masculine poses, which I think I, I see more in your stuff. Um, I'm not going to say your stuff is, I, I, I don't want to put labels on your work. No, just price tags. Well, like how do you conceive of these, the look of the piece before you go in, do you just sort of find it while you're making it? Do you have something in your head when you're producing it to begin with? Or like, uh, how does something take shape? Yeah, no, it's, it's funny. Like right now I'm working on a new ghost sculpture and I'm doing it from just above the belly button up. So it's more of a bust um, mm -hmm. and, and, you know, and busts. Um, but, um, and, <laughs> <laughs> uh, and it's, you know, and for me, it's uh, just, you know, interesting, you know, sort of, I know this sounds like kind of like sick and twisted, but segmenting the fat body. So for mm. instance, I've been doing a lot of hand studies, which have been fun um, based on someone we know. Um, <laughs> <laughs> but, ooh, ooh, ooh. But, but who could that be? Ooh, who could that be? I think Trevor, Trevor, you do have the, the most um, beautiful and voluptuous hands that I've ever seen. Um, it's true. Can I just it's say true. that when we were, when Trevor and I first started dating and I think you were still in art school, Trevor, mm. he sent me, I, how did you make, it was a cast of your thumb. How yes. Was that? What was a that? plaster. Well, I used alginate and then I cast it in, um, I don't think it's plaster. I think it's just cement. And then he painted it green. <laughs> <laughs> well, green thumb, that makes sense. <laughs> green thumb, um, which neither of us has. But it, no, it was the sweetest, <laughs> cutest. I mean, his, his thumb is adorable. And, you know, I, I, I take it often. <laughs> um, <laughs> well, yes, no. So, and, 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 and I based them off of Trevor's. Yes, Trevor's beautiful hands. He has wonderful hands. Mm. But... Um, but yeah, no segment. Trevor, you're famous. <laughs> the Mona Lisa of hands. Um, <laughs> you know, it, um, it's been interesting. Yeah, just segmenting the body and looking at different aspects of it, um, other than just um, just a full figure. 
uh, mm-hmm. character. Is that something intellectual with, I mean, I guess because so much of your work could be called fat activist. So much of your work could be called uh, explorations in sensuality. And I, I mean, how do you, it's kind of following up on Don's question. How do, how do you think of it? I mean, you're in it, you're making it. Is it, 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 do you do you have a mission? Are you coming from a point of view, or do you just like you make art and then you figure it out later? I think it's just sort of. I I think if you overthink things, they just kind of look overthought, and mm. so I try to just sort of go into it with, like, uh, sometimes I'll just have an image just come into my head, and then mm. I sort of fill in why I want. Well, there has to be a reason why I'm going to spend like two weeks or three weeks on this project. So I say to myself, yeah. why am I going to do this for three weeks? And there are some projects that just don't see the light of day that I'm still working on. And I just haven't found it yet, you know? And I think that's like, you know, how like divine with John Waters, I feel like John Waters never went into his work and said, I'm going to be, and I'm using him just as an example, but him being sure. like, I'm, you know, see myself as an activist, but, you know, Divine making, you know, himself a basically a bloated Liz Taylor to me is activism without intention. And mm-hmm. yeah. that's sort of how I sort of, I guess I sort of approach it myself kind of. It's like I create these things because I just enjoy creating them. Not that I'm, you know, wanting to make sure that, you know, fat kids don't, you know, stop, you know, Mean dessert, <laughs> you know, like, like, you know, like yeah. you know, <laughs> fat kids eat your desserts. <laughs> yes, you know, or like whatever, you know. Like it's not like yeah. I'm going out in the day and being like, you know, I- I'm here, you know, I'm fat and get out of my way, you know. It's like, um, <laughs> which I have to say, not like Trevor. Just, I, Move, I I'm have fat. To add that, that with COVID, New York City sidewalks are a lot easier to walk around. Um, (laughs) but yeah no i I just feel that you know it's um i think in general i i think we all can agree too with like we're all gay men and being gay men is like you know on a daily basis i feel like i'm an activist just being gay um you know by what you know i I do say to myself you know with, with my husband nick he we have this thing where we you know we don't post things on the internet that we don't want coming back to us to, you know, shame us in any way in, t- in terms of being like, you know, that, that was something that we should have, have said, or, you know, that thing we did, we shouldn't have done that thing. You know, mm-hmm. I, I think mm-hmm. that that's mm-hmm. sort of how I sort of approach my daily life. You know, mm. I just love the, the idea of segmented fat bodies because there's so, I mean, so little fat body representation in i mean every space basically and i feel like there's so much more i, I feel so, the same is like there's so much more to fat bodies to explore yes and you know there's all these <laughs> literally uh, literally i mean literally we <laughs> i'm doing my time, best i'm doing my absolute episode. best i swear <laughs> um <laughs> it up, Dan. but like you know there's i mean how many thousands of detailed drawings or paintings or photographs of just a hand Mm. Mm -hmm. and you know hands are hard to draw like i get it (laughs) like it's but fat hand i mean there's so i speaking as a fat hand model (laughs) (laughs) um, (laughs) there's so much to every part of the way a, a fat body moves and how things fold and crease and move and i think maybe that's why you know this new kind of youtube um generation of artists is exploring motion with fat and just mm. the way things move because there is so much to it and so much gravity to it i i don't mm. think i know what you're speaking of trevor and you mentioned this too bats the, what do you mean by youtube exploring motion are we are we animation or are we talking about uh i i've no i don't think i've seen these youtube videos well, you know, I think it's fat, like, for instance, me, let's take Lizzo, for instance, you know, with her Instagram posts and of her, you know, um, you know, jiggling her body and just living her life. I remember my father seeing it and just being like, what the fuck? And like, my father just didn't know what to make of it. He didn't like, he wasn't, he wasn't against her body. He just didn't know what to like 
make of it? He was like, and, and he also said to me, he was like, that body moves like that. That was like, his, oh. his, and I was like, that's really interesting, you know? And like, and, and also too, I've heard a lot of other people being like, you know, with people like Lizzo. And I believe there was a, a dancer that you were friends with, Dan, um, that you're friends with Dexter? Dan. Uh, yes. Dexter Mayfield. Yes. Dex, yeah. um, and the fact that when he dances and he moves, like his whole body moves in this like beautiful way, but I don't think would have like the fact that we slow-mo, you know, his body and movement and like just seeing the body move in a certain way, I think is really mm. beautifully artistic. Uh, there was a, a show maybe, uh, maybe it was about like, six years ago and, and it, I forgot the artist's name, but I walked in and it was, it was beautiful. It was a bunch of women, um, torsos. It was done by a woman, um, all their torsos and them, um, being projected on giant screens and black and white. And it was just seeing up close, like their you know, stretch marks and their, you know, mm. their boobs and, and everything just sort of like the, their, you know, the sag of the body and that sort of thing and watching them in motion. And so they were like jumping up and down on a trampoline, but you only saw their torso area uh, mm. or they were like scratching a scratch on their back. So you saw like their fingers digging into skin and that sort of thing. And I think, you know, that sort of thing was just fascinating to look at because, you know, it, it, these are things I don't think people naturally have, you know, filmed or documented and mm -hmm. I think that there's a new pr appreciation for that visually, I think. That's great. I yeah. wonder if the representation of bodies normalizes our perception of those bodies. And I wonder if that's why it feels like fat bodies just haven't been normalized. Like yeah. the more often you see them, the less sort of. Okay, yeah. So basically when you never portray a fat body, it's not a surprise when any portrayal of a fat body is accused of being promoting fat. Exactly. Mm -hmm. you know, how dare you make it exist? Yeah. You know, that, now that people know it exists, they're all going to want to be fat. I'm like, wait, hold on. What? <laughs> wait. <laughs> well, there's a yeah. friend, um, and I think Trevor, I think your friends with him is Noel Rivera. Yes. Um, he's an animator, illustrator. And what I love, he's, um, I, I think he's still in school, but he is doing a ton of animations of just characters with different bodies and what i love about his work is that he's working with the way fat animates mm -hmm. on the bodies it's not mm -hmm. about like it being sexual or anything it's just showing like this is how this belly would bounce or this is how you know this woman's hips would move you know mm -hmm. um and it's it's kind of awesome that you know that also i bet too the technology has gotten better um for these things but also too i think it's kind of cool that he's approaching his animations by saying, you know, I want to know what, like, I want to animate what normal bodies, how they move, you know, mm -hmm. um, in a way yeah. that is natural. Someday we're going to have a video game with realistic uh, belly physics. <laughs> mm. I was going to say, they, had, they came up with the boob physics yeah. like, almost so, two decades ago, and now we're going to I worked in video physics. games for over 10 years, right? And I think there was only one video game I ever worked on that had fat characters. Um, and that one was called the movies. And like you had all, you ran a movie studio for a hundred years and you had all these actors that you had to keep happy. The only ways to help them deal with stress was with food or alcohol. Oh, wow. <laughs> and if you gave them too much alcohol, they became a drunk and they wouldn't show up to set. If you gave them too much food, they would get fat which would lower their value at the box office. But, <laughs> so while they, while they had um, the, the fat body, though, because it was intrinsic to the game, they should have done something with the physics, but they fought it. They just enlarged the body sizes, body which meant they it. walked yeah. around like the, stiffly like the Michelin man everywhere yeah. they went. Mm. Yeah, body and, yeah. Yeah, and that's always been the excuse in video games is we don't want to have to make... We don't have to want to animate another model. It would be it, Ooh, and all the oh, physics please. involved. If it was a buxom which, woman, they'd be very happy to animate. Well, that's the thing. We've had breast. <laughs> we've had breast physics since exactly. like the mid nineties. Like, why can't we have that for other body parts? One thing that was quite a 
quite a pleasant surprise for me. And I know there's a whole lot of political BS around this game. So I don't want to talk about the rest of it, but in cyberpunk 2077, they have a really wide range. We, we should actually talk about that game at some point just generally, but they have a really wide range of bodies, including, including um, men and women, the size of Gus in the game, just walking around, but also major, major characters. And they are animated differently. Like they do have a different walk and like a different, like it, it feels like they actually put some effort into animating different body sizes um, as opposed to just making a skinny model, you know, larger and then being done with it. I'm glad they put some effort into something with that game. No, I don't know. I'm, I'm not getting into it. I've avoided all the controversy. Well, like Michael and I have talked about Borderlands. Good job continuing past. to avoid it, Trevor. <laughs> I was, I was wondering just more generally, uh, Bats, what, are there are there particular themes you notice you keep coming back to? Are there things that, like I I know in my writing there's there's things that I that I like to chew on and I will base many stories around it even though the stories are very different. I feel like I'm I'm continuing to hone this theme as it were. Do you feel like that? Are you drawn to particular things that you've identified in your work or things that you really like to celebrate? Yeah, like currently I'm working on a um, well I I'm trying to do different things with my children's book work in terms of playing with the idea of size and that and that being something, because I think that usually um, how that's equated in a book is done by using like an elephant or something that's just, you know, an animal, you know, mm-hmm. and which is, you know, a, a way for children to, you know, see it, uh, um, you know, size as being, you know, this is, you know, an elephant in this space, you know, it means, you know, the elephant is bigger than this space or, you know, um, and the elephant is different from everyone else because he's much bigger and that sort of thing. But, you know, I've been trying to play with it more in terms of being abstract with it and I'm playing with this idea, but um, I think that's what I'm trying to play around with in terms of like playing with size and, you know, being a bigger guy and, you know, doing different things with dealing with sizes in, in a more abstract way, kind of like how I can just the describe. appearance of different size or do you mean like the size contrast? Mm, and, uh, yeah, I think or size both. contrast is, I always think that's kind of played out, but like maybe like the idea of abstracting in terms of like um, what it is to be a larger size person. What does it feel like to be, um, a person like, for instance, what I find is interesting about Gus with uh, people's perception is people's perception of Gus's weight is v- v- extremely varied. I get people <laughs> who tell me Gus weighs 300 pounds. I get people telling me he weighs 800 pounds. It's like it varies <laughs> somewhere in between 300 and 800. Yep. That's, that's a huge, like, like di- diverse range. And I find that people's perception of size and being bigger and small, it, it, it's really interesting. And then you hear people talk about like, you know, during COVID, you know, I put on 20 pounds and then I put on my, you know, my dress clothes, you know, to go to work for the first time in how many months. And that just felt crazy because I was busting out of them. You know, people have, you know, I, I think dealing with size, you know, it, it's really fascinates me in terms of uh, dealing that with, in terms of a, in an abstract kind of way. Um, maybe that's, I'm um, try, try to approach it um, with, a, you know, with Gus sometimes too, like I'll play around with, you know, there's this new piece that I'm working on. I'm playing around with the size, the tiles of the bathroom I'm using, putting Gus in. Mm. And because the bigger the tiles, the less Gus looks bigger, but the smaller the tiles, but I think Gus looks ginormous. So I've been playing <laughs> around with tile size. It's one of those things where it's like kind of like, well, isn't it kind of cool if you make like the tiles much smaller? And, you know, That's and kind of box them mm-hmm. in, you know. So it's sort of those kinds of things where um, that I'm constantly playing with. Um, I, I love that you've like, discovered that large tiles are slimming. I just think that's <laughs> <laughs> they just are. They just are. <laughs> uh, I know uh, what my next outfit's going to be made out of. <laughs> well, every time you go to Home Depot, you stand in the tile section. You're like, does this tile make me fat? <laughs> <laughs> so uh, I have to know what what is for, we have the inside scoop here. We have the potential for concrete answers. How much does Gus weigh? 
not, I'm not going to tell. I mean, that's, that's a mystery. I'm not going to let go. I, I wow. have to. Uh, oh, I Only his hairdresser away. knows, Michael. Yeah. How, how, how t- if you tell me how tall he is, I bet you I could guess. Oh, no. No, no, no. no, no, no. Oh, okay. <laughs> hey, check your tiled privilege, Michael. That's Gus the transcends uh, height and weight. Well, that's the funny thing too. It's playing also too with food size. So like there's a painting that I did with uh, Gus holding a tiny um, the ice cream cone and, you know, and I have, you know, just a hand uh, piece with him with an ice cream cone. And I've been playing around with sizes of food because what I find fascinating is, you know, a lot of painters who paint, you know, characters holding, I don't know, any junk food item, you know, it's always like overly large overly big, you know, it's like American sized, mm-hmm. you know, tubs of chicken, you know, that sort of thing. <laughs> and I've been loving playing around with maybe doing like, you know, Gus holding like a tiny drumstick, you know, like, <laughs> tiny, like fat, big giant fat hands holding tiny food. But I, lo- and then, mm-hmm. and I just love that idea of just making tiny, tiny food. And that is being held by these giant hands, you know? So I just did you use Trevor's hand as the model for the ice cream cone? I did. I did. And I said, I knew (laughs) (laughs) I recognized it before we even you talked about it. What I think is sure they had too. And then I said, Trevor, I need, I need, do me a peace sign real quick. Yeah. (laughs) And Trevor sent it to me. Yeah. They said front side and back. And then I did, and then I did one of the, of the, the hand based on Trevor. Uh, well, I, yeah. that, that really that was really fascinating me because that question that might have been a joke that Michael said, like, how much does he weigh? And I found that really illuminating to your previous answer, Bats, that it's really kind of fascinating that Gus has no height and Gus has no weight. Like, it's not that you're just not disclosing it. It's that it's he's 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 a character and he has the size and weight. Uh, he has the appearance of a size and weight of whatever scene you put him in. And that it's mm-hmm. it's it, he, it's not a constant thing. Like you know, people in the world they they do have a height and they do have a weight at a particular moment. But with Gus, he has no height, he has no weight, and that's just a fascinating way to conceive of a human being. I think. I mean, maybe I'm taking this too far, but I'm really just delighted and tickled by the idea that oh my god, he has no height and he has no weight. It's it's not a it's not a consistent. It's like asking what color shirt does he wear. It's like mm-hmm. well, he wears the color shirt that he wears. <laughs> well, it's like, it's, it's like the Hello Kitty effect. It's like we don't know how. With like over time, people have given like Kitty ages and whatnot. But like it's sort of like we don't know a lot about Kitty, but we know enough. And yeah. you can put yourself sort of on those kinds of characters where you're like, I can, I, you know, the people can put you know their weight onto us of you know how much they think he weighs or how big Gus actually is um, in their own perception. I'm curious to like what people's reactions will be of Gus with tiny food. Cause I can see it going like, it's kind of the thing. It's like, what are people's perceptions around fat and food? Is it like, Oh, well of course, like he's so fat that this is so tiny or it's like, Oh, He's starving himself. Mm-hmm. Exactly. <laughs> eating this. I mean, when exactly. I, he said the, the chicken, oh, the drumstick. That, that I was my of, first thought, too. No, yeah, no. The, it, it, I, I think that's like what's fun is that, you know, you do that with size. Because it's it's interesting also, too, with people who are, you know, foreign, foreign people who also look at the work. And especially with the work that has food in it. Because um, I remember one woman uh, who I had showed it to and she said, it was very funny. We were chatting one time and we were talking about who, what, what we, you know, we would be personally muses to certain artists. And she looked at me and she goes, Botero. And uh, <laughs> I was like, I was like oh, he's one of, you know, I love him. He's a great, you know, one of my faves. Um, but was, what was funny about her was she was like, um, you know, just proportions of food sizes in general. Like, you know, you go to France and you look at like, the size of a chicken in France versus the size of a chicken in the United States, they're different yeah. sizes. And so it's really interesting to seeing people looking at perceptions of food from the other side of the world who aren't so diet conscious, like in the same way as Americans are. Mm-hmm. And um, so that's been fascinating too, to get the, that sort of reaction from people. Mm. Mm. That's great. This is a bit of a tangent, but something uh, you just said made me think of this. 
when I when I've done a few of our bits in the past, I've had to I went back and I tried to find art that celebrated fat bodies, right? And Botero came up, Rubens came up, and I was really kind of reaching f- to find other representation in the, in oh, uh, in an art that goes back literally thousands of years. Um, do you have any, uh, you mentioned Botero, do you have any other people that you look back at as sort of forerunners for your work? Hmm. So there was an, um, there's a bunch of artists like Jenny Seville and, you know, has done mostly women, um, large women paintings, um, and she's from England. I mean, Lucian Freud did a ton of stuff with Lee Bowery, but I don't really necessarily think that they're actually attractive. I mean, I, I don't think Lucian Freud is going for attractiveness for anybody, but, um, you know, he does, he did some, you know, uh, stuff with Lee Bowery, but then there was like some artist in Germany that has like completely disappeared. And I have no idea his call. His name was Sven Oliver. Oh yes, I oh, know. Yeah. In fact, I have Sven one of his Oliver? pictures in I have one of his pictures in my book actually. Oh yeah. And he he's just I love his stuff and he just has disappeared. He nowhere and and yeah, I actually no found. Yeah, he was actually getting a lot of uh good press and praise and you know, he had some good gallery shows for a while and he's just disappeared and yeah. he was someone I was like really into. What about that Chinese sculptor of I, I'm picturing like the the really beautiful round fat man on the high ladder. Yeah, you know I'm talking at looking at looking yes. in the window. These huge sculptures that are gorgeous. I love. His I don't know pieces. his name though. I, I feel though that my feeling about him is I feel he's a little anti fat in some ways. And he does beautiful ways. I, I think his work is beautiful in terms of how he does everything that I was saying about movement and everything. I wish his faces were less um cheruby you know like less a little more um attractive <laughs> I, 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 have, I have no problem with his face i like cherub well then you know what <laughs> i'm the wrong fan i'm not <laughs> he has a fan of dan i'm just not yeah his, uh, yep. but uh, that's but his yeah his work is incredible i mean he did that the, that piece i don't know if you've seen it dan but there's an, a giant he did a giant piece on a building Yes, um, mm-hmm. and it's incredible. I mean, it's absolutely yeah. beautiful and incredible piece. Um, but I, yeah, I just don't see in the fine art world. And I live, I live in Ch- in the Chelsea area, and so I go to the galleries basically every day if I can. Lately, I haven't because of COVID, but every day I was like popping into galleries, you know, during lunch or you know, late afternoons. And it is fascinating to see what is in the galleries in terms of like just fat body and there's nothing I, I don't, in, in the Chelsea galleries and then the, you know, in the art world too, I don't see a lot of that push either. And it, I would like to see that more. There, there's a lot of female, um, you know, fat body painters, but there's not, you know, nothing going on in terms of the male, you know, male painters. And I think that it would be nice to see a lot more, um, I would say gay male representation, you know, fat representation, I think mm-hmm. in the art world, because I think that what is kind of fascinatingly, I mean, seeing, you know, bodies, you know, gay bodies and gay fat bodies in the, you know, out there in Instagram and, and out in the viral world, it, it's sort of, it's beautiful. It's, it's ever changing. It's fascinating seeing how people are dressing themselves and expressing themselves in their own, fat bodies and it's it's mm-hmm. it's really and it's not that they're dressing themselves in a more flamboyant way it's just that they're dressing themselves in a way that just expresses themselves and and, and they're showing their own representation um physically mm-hmm. and so i think that you know I, I would love to see more of that kind of stuff in gallery spaces and and less of the art that i do see which is more of this you know very gay, uh, you know, very, um, very bear oriented, um, fetishy kind of feel if it is represented, Mm -hmm. um, which is fine. Mm -hmm. There's there's a place for that, but I don't think it necessarily needs to, uh, I don't know if we need to necessarily constantly sexualize the fat body to have it appreciated. Well, I think that's sort of endemic in gay art is sexualizing the body. That's, that's a lot of the gay perspective in art. Yeah. Uh, which, you know, it's, I, I don't think that's good or bad. I just think it's, it might be at worst narrow. 
Yeah. <laughs> We're expecting. Well, I feel like there's something even more revolutionary to portray the fat body in a sexual form. So mm. people, I, I don't mean revolutionary as in something new. I mean, literally revolutionary, like fighting against. Yeah, because it's um, been such trails. a taboo for some, so many you know, so many decades. Yeah, but I, I can see the temptation where if you're going to celebrate that sort of body, you want to move in that direction to make the statement more extreme. I'd imagine. Well, yeah, and and there's also this 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 odd line. Like you look at a at a fat body, and it's posed in a particular way, and you know, Michael and I might find it very sexual, and some thin woman might find it very not sexual and very disgusting and you know oh it's obviously an exploration of the of the horrors of obesity um you know and michael and i are like mm -hmm. wow that's great erotica um, <laughs> <laughs> and i just I, I think it's even hard to and maybe and maybe the artist has a point of view on that and maybe that's important i don't know but i just think it's it's so hard sometimes to draw the line between is this a celebration of sensuality and does that make it erotic and is that a good or a bad thing and what was the intention and do we care what the intention was and it just raises a whole hornet's nest of questions i think which which is not a problem but it just does yeah yeah i think it comes down to whose eye is it for too so like mm. bats when i'm looking through your your work i'm finding a lot of stuff and they were like oh like i i see myself in there i see like myself being represented in a way that i'm not used to and if your stuff was more sexualized, I don't think I would see myself. Mm, interesting. You know, that's just not part of my self image as default. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Um, but a celebration of the body, a solidity, uh, a lot of the, a lot of the tones I'm getting from your work. Like I see me and I appreciate that because I'm not used to seeing me in any sort of art. Well, that's awesome. Yeah. yeah, no, I, I think that I, I think that for me, when I look at, um, just you know big bodies you know i am attracted to bigger men but i sort of want to see like the idea of like i think i was talking about it before just sort of like the meditation of the body and like just seeing it as like it, it's just it's tr the body in its true form kind of and i think that mm -hmm. you approaching a body and you know let's say like a body in, in, a, in a terms of art you know dan really said it Really, when it's like you approach it and you, you know, can put on, you know, do I want to sexualize this piece or do I want to feel something else from it? And I, and I, I definitely think that, you know, there are people who fetishize guts. I will tell you, I will tell you right off. <laughs> there are people who are like, you know, no, let me see Gus's dick. Do you have to have a drawing that somewhere? And, you know, and like, and I'm like, no, sorry. Hey, a commission's a commission's a commission. <laughs> Very high. That's yeah. That's what it is. You just charge them over, like extremely high for it. Um, but you charge know, them by it, the inch. I was just thinking that, Don. <laughs> <laughs> but only I have the poor taste to say it. <laughs> but it's true. It's really interesting how people are just like you know. Some people have fetishized. Like there was some guy from. Spain who like wrote a little story about it and I was like oh thank you <laughs> and I put it away and I was like this is fun and of course I showed it to my husband and he has a good chuckle of it and he's like this is hilarious but you know you, you say those things and um you know take a look at them on a rainy day when you're saying oh nothing's working and whatever you're like there's someone who spent like three hours on this story. <laughs> I love that Gus is inspiring <laughs> slash fiction. <laughs> I think the less fat bodies we see in general represented in art, the more they won't be kind of sexualized and fetishized when we do see them. Uh, I mean, I was talking with Dan about there's um this fat woman started a website with basically reference photos for art with fat bodies but she has password protected it and you have mm. to get the password from her. And I was almost like, Oh my God, this would be like a good uh, tip for the show. But it's like, but no chasers or fetishists. <laughs> like she, um, she says that explicitly because yes. she wouldn't want anybody looking at these people and thinking anything sexual about the fat body. That would be, just be terrible. Which like I get, like I get, but also I think the more like when you put it that way and you frame it as like, but you can't look at this cause it's, you're going to think it's sexy and that's wrong. Like that, I feel like <laughs> feeds into that. <laughs> well, like, it just further, yeah, it further inculcates the idea of fat as a taboo and that yeah. representing it is breaking a taboo. Mm -hmm. 
So maybe there well, there's always going to be that one creepy guy who takes the art course just to see the nude model. Like, oh yeah, you can't mm-hmm. you can't keep those people out, <laughs> but you can choose to cater to the people who are there for you know the appreciation of the art itself. And, there, and Michael, their art is my favorite. I like I've had those people in those classes. <laughs> um, I have always said it's the truest art. Really, it's <laughs> they, 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 they will draw like boobs, ass, you know, whatever. There was one guy who loved feet and he just draw the foot, just a giant 18 by 24 foot, you know? Wow. And the, you know, the professor would go by and be like, you know, there's more to the body, you know, and talking about segmenting <laughs> body parts, you know, and drawing them, but he just would draw the foot, you know, or the feet. And so it, I loved those guys. Those were my faves. <laughs> <laughs> Can I just share? I've been watching a lot of horror movies, so every mm. time we're talking about segmenting fat bodies, I'm yeah, getting exactly. entirely the wrong <laughs> visuals. <laughs> I have it's to turn into a really creepy show. I, I think know. about that every time the word is brought up. Well, segmenting. <laughs> <laughs> well, no, and, and, well, and and there is like I get asked a lot in seminars or or one on one about like, well, is it a f- is is it a fetish? And there's a long trail to go down there. But the whole idea of a fetish is that it's an object. But there are people who do relate to the to the body or the fat body as, uh, as like the foot is an object or the belly is an object or the dick is an object. Mm-hmm. Uh, and, and so y- you can turn it into that very specific, you know, the fetishes because uh, a, a fetish is, is correctly speaking, a particular object. It's not just liking something a lot. Mm-hmm. So uh, in sexology, I mean, in, in popular culture, it's anything people want it to mean, but I guess what I'm saying is that, that that this segmentation is also very alive and well in the Chub Chaser community, in the Gainer Encourager community, where people are are segmenting the body, mm-hmm. uh, but to a completely different effect, obviously. Yeah, yeah, and I mean, it's it's it, it, I mean, I you know I remember having a, you know a, a sex uh, positive professor you know say to me you know you can make a mole. A, you know, a fetish. And I was like, it's true. You probably could make a mole a fetish, you know, anything, anything could be fetishized. Um, but you know, that's what's, that's what's beautiful about life. Right. <laughs> <laughs> that anything can be a fetish. Everything can be. Mm-hmm. You, if you um, don't like it, wanted, someone else loves it. <laughs> <laughs> I wanted to ask just cause I, there's so many of our listeners who, uh, are, are artists either professionally or as just as a hobby. I wonder how did you know, uh, that you wanted to turn art into an actual career and not just something that was really fun to do. Cause I think a lot of people are in that position of like, well, yeah, I really like it, but I don't know if I want to really do it. Um, like for money. Yeah. I mean, I, I think there, well, I mean, with art, there is money and there is no money, you know, you have mm-hmm. to sort of find the money, you know, if you want money, if you, you know, if you want to survive, if you want to do something that you're just strongly passionate about, do it still. You know, I think that um, what's interesting about my artistic life is that, you know, I've done a lot of different things. You know, I've, I'm a designer. I, you know, do children's books. I do illustration in magazines and newspapers. I do all these things. And like sort of what I found with the Gus stuff was it sort of was my fine art departure in a way for me to just sort of find another part of myself. And what's been great about it is that it just sort of influences everything. So Mm. I find that like, if you want to, you know, if you strongly are passionate about being an artist, that's the first step in the whole thing. I really feel, I feel like if you get up every day and you have creative thoughts and you want to make something, then, then you have to do it. You know, um, Mm. I, I just think that's what it really comes down to. And I think that too, like, you know, you also have to be true to yourself too. If you want to be an artist in general, I think, I think that when you sort of, I think with the, for instance, like just again, bringing back to the, the gut stuff, you know, that for me, I felt that was a way of sort of exploring this part of myself that I, you know, I was just sort of finding comfort in my own body, maybe in a way through the gut stuff, or maybe finding mm. who I was through gus, um, in terms of just being like happy with just the idea of 
you know, of the fat male form, you know, and, and mm-hmm. that being who I am. Bats, um, what do you, do you have anything you want to plug? Um, um, I mean, I, I believe you go still... to see your stuff. Yeah. yeah. I update regularly on Instagram on Studio Bats Lightning. Um, it's my handle on there. And um, I have stuff, but I can't say it at the moment. Sucks, okay. But mm. I can't give you first exclusives, but um, secret stuff. Secrets. Um, yeah. There's a rumor of a website called BetsLangley.com. Also, BetsLangley.com. You can also go on there. I also have a store and I um, sell stuff on there. And I have. Um, are the Gus prints still available for Valentine's Day? Yes, we do have more Gus prints uh, available. And yeah, just. And there's a, a yeah. store link and you can uh, purchase them there as well. Well, thanks again for joining us. Yes, this was lovely. I, yeah, well, so Bats Langley is one you. of my favorite people. Uh, and mm-hmm. Trevor, Trevor is, and and Dan too. You both are one of my two of my favorite peeps, and I really truly appreciate um, my in here, and also meeting you two guys. So, um, which is awesome as well. Yeah, it was yeah. great to meet you. You can find all of the lovely links to Bats Langley's projects at the usual places. We're on Instagram and Twitter as at Big Fat Gay Pod. We're on Facebook as the Big Fat Gay Podcast. Leave us five stars there. Leave us five stars in a review on Apple, but not Stitcher anymore. Remember that from last week? Not anymore. But listen to us on (laughs) Stitcher too. Uh, See the links on our website, www.bigfatgaypod.com. There's going to be Amazon links so you can buy uh, some books for your Valentine. Uh, And maybe your... um, Before you get to the wrap up, I just wanted to say thank you to the people who've been leaving us reviews lately. We've gotten a little, a little burst of reviews. Oh, good. Yay. Thank you very much. I love reading. We are noticed. Yeah. Maybe you're inspired by this wrap up to leave us a review. (laughs) And then (laughs) you turn around and Bats Langley is there. He's drawing you. He wants you to be his Gus. So you get to say it. You get to say it. (laughs) Watch out. <laughs> <laughs> there you go. There we go. <laughs> <laughs>